let's talk about a long run analysis of a perfectly competitive market and derive a long run supply curve. Remember, I previously said the long run supply curve, the market supply curve and the short run supply curves, market supply curves are two different things. And so uh, now we're going to talk about long run supply curves. Uh, well, first, what do we mean by long run in a perfectly competitive market? Uh, here's the definition. A perfectly competitive market is in a long run equilibrium if there are no incentives for profit maximizing firms to enter to this market or to leave the market. This will occur when the number of firms is such that price is equal to marginal cost, which is equal to average cost, or this is uh, the zero profit condition. I'm going to explain why this is a zero profit condition, but let's first talk about what we mean by no incentives for firms to enter or exit. So you can think of this market as an environment where uh, firms can make money, right? Um, and let's suppose there are many other uh, sellers outside of this market, they're investors who are looking opportunities uh, to make more money or profit. So if they realize that there's room for profit in this market, they're going to enter. All right. And so if the firms in this market are not making any profit, well, they're going to exit. So here it's very important sort of assumption in a perfectly competitive market in the long run, we assume that the firms can freely enter and exit. If this is not true, all right, well, then obviously this analysis is not going to be true. For example, if this is a market where you have to make huge amount of capital investment initially, all right, meaning your sunk cost, your fixed cost is going to be like terribly high. For example, opening a nuclear power plant, all right, you, you have to spend like billions of dollars. Well, then clearly you cannot exit the market so easily or enter the market so easily. All right, so it's not therefore uh, form a perfectly competitive market, at least in the long run, right? I mean, all right, so that, that is a very important assumption, free entry, free exit. So once again, if there's an opportunity uh, for profit in the market, uh, you know, new firms will enter uh, so that they can also enjoy this profit. And if there's loss in this pro uh, market because the demand shrinked too much and so uh, uh, firms are losing money, so they can exit the market and you know, do business somewhere else or do another business. All right, well, now let's look at why this is a zero profit condition. Well, remember the profit is the revenue P times Q minus cost, right? All right, what I'm going to do, uh, I can rewrite this, take into Q parentheses, it's going to be P minus uh, cost divided by Q, right? It doesn't change anything. So what is cost divided by Q? Well, this is what we call average costs, right? So this is P minus average cost times quantity. So this is what profit is. I'm just rewriting it. All right. Well, now let's look at an individual firm. So this is, uh, this is quantity. This is, you know, the money, you know, cost, price, everything is on the vertical axis. So normally we have the average cost curve, something like this. It doesn't really have to be in U shaped, but I don't know, for some reason we always draw them as a U shape. Uh, but normally it decreases in some region and then bounces back and increases. And this minimum point, if you remember, I mentioned this, the marginal cost curve and the average cost curve are going to intersect at one point. And that point we called uh, efficiency scale. So this is uh, the amount of output where the average cost will be minimized. And this is exactly the point where MC and AC are going to intersect. Okay, so uh, here's the thing. What do I have here? Let's suppose this is the market price. Well, if this is the market price, I know that this individual firm is going to produce exactly this much quantity. Let's erase this Q. So this is how much this firm is going to produce, right? Because the, its marginal cost is its supply curve. All right. Well, what's going to be his profit? Well, simple. I can show the profit region in this graph. For this, I need to look at this um, equality. Remember, the profit is equal to price minus AC of producing this Q units of output. So this is how much quantity he produces. What's going to be his AC? 
Well, this is his average cost of producing Q units of output. So P minus AC, this part, times Q, the output he produces. Basically, when I multiply these two, it gives me this area, right? So this is exactly uh, what the profit of this firm is going to look like. So if the market price shrinks or decreases, clearly this area is going to uh, get smaller and smaller. As P increases, this area is going to get larger and larger, so the profit will increase. So the question is, why P has to be equal to MC, which is equal to AC? Well, first of all, this comes from the fact that this is a firm operating in a perfectly competitive market. So P is going to be equal to MC. This is how much this firm will always produce. This part is, however, comes from the fact that in the long run, firms should have no incentive to enter or exit this market. Well, what happens if MC or P is greater than AC? All right, so P is going to be equal to MC, right? So ignore MC. So when P is greater than AC, which is this case, there's going to be positive profit. What does that mean? That means firms, some firms operating in this market are going to be able to make positive profit. That's going to uh, attract uh, investors who are outside of this market. So remember free entry, free exit? Investors are going to come in or new firms are going to come into this market. And when they come in, uh, remember the total profit of this market it is, depends on the market demand. So the market demand is like how much quantity you can sell. So if there are more firms, but the demand is fixed, obviously those firms are going to be sharing this profit, right? So the, you can think of this market profit as like the whole cake available in this market and as new firms enter each gets some slice and so each firm's slice will shrink and therefore each firm's profitability is going to decline later i'm going to draw some other graphs and show how this uh, uh, shrinking is going to happen but I'll, I'll come to this later so the idea is that when price is higher than ac uh, there is opportunity or incentive for other firms to enter. But remember the definition of perfectly competitive market in the long run equilibrium? Uh, there should be no incentives for firm to enter. So therefore, P shouldn't be higher than AC. Well, what if P is less than AC? Well, I, I don't know if I need to draw it, but let's very quickly draw this. Exactly the same graph, all right? So I'm not going to tag the boundaries. Uh, again, this is AC, this is MC, the marginal cost. So this is, let's say, the price. So if this is the price, this is how much optimal quantity the firm should be producing. This is the marge of average cost of producing. So P minus AC, but this time AC is bigger than, so therefore this is going to be negative but I still multiply it by Q. So this is going to be loss, all right? So, but again, this is profit. So it makes, the firm makes negative profit, all right? So therefore, if P is less than AC, some firms have incentive to uh, exit this firm. But again, this sort of contradicts with the definition of being a perfectly competitive market, long run equilibrium. So when we have no incentives, where firms would like to enter or exit, well, this is only possible when P is equal to AC, meaning firms must be making zero economic profit. That's also a very important thing to underline. Uh, remember, we said economic profit and accounting profit are two different things. In real life, obviously, firms are making positive accounting profits, but that doesn't mean that they are making positive profit. Uh, well, some may obviously make a positive profit. That's probably because the market is not perfectly competitive or maybe the market is, in, is not in the long run equilibrium. It could be a short run uh, thing. So therefore, the conclusion P equals MC, which is equal AC, is what we call zero profit condition. And when the perfectly competitive market is in long run equilibrium, uh, this is going to be the case. All right.